Hello, good morning. Thank you very much to everyone that's accompanying us today in Pontificia Universidad Católica de Chile. And to whoever is accompanying us through YouTube, welcome to the academic conference to safeguard freedom of press in the midst of a journalistic uh, expression perspectives from the academia. This is within the framework of the Global Day for Freedom of Speech led by UNESCO, whose quarter 2024 is in Santiago, Chile. Now, the universities that are hosts here, we have the School of Communication and Image of Universidad de Chile and the School of Pontificia Universidad Católica de Chile. And on behalf of these two universities, we'd like to welcome you. To those of you that want to ask questions, please, to, to all of our speakers, please write them down in your the papers in your folders, and then you can hand them to Magdalena Yanez, our assistant. We'll start with a panel called Interculturality as a Pending Challenge for Freedom of Speech, Freedom of Press. We've got uh, five lectures. Each presentation will last for 10 minutes maximum. I'll let, I'll let you know when we have three minutes left and when there's one minute left. So you can start concluding. We'll now start with a presentation called Exhibition, Exposure of Migrant Communities to Hate Speeches in the Media Ecosystem from Aramara del Talfaro, Maria Jose Rios. They, they are the authors. Amaral Talfaro, who's an uh, academic of the School of Journalism of Universidad Alberto Tado and coordinator of the theme group Communication, Gender, and Interculturality of Income will give a lecture. Ina Simon, who is a PhD in sociology, journalist, academic from uh, the School of Journalism and Communication, the School of Communications of Universidad del Desarrollo. Please, ma'am, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Claudia, for your presentation. Thank you to everyone that is here. Good morning. Mentioning this panel is quite important for us because this activity in this panel was assembled in the context of uh, the theme group, Communication, Gender, and Interculturality. And we'd like to thank you very much for this discussion space. And I'd like to thank the organizers from Universidad de Chile who are accompanying us. Uh, we have Jimena Po in our group and Ernesto. And Claudia from Universidad Católica because we know that these weeks have been We've had a lot of work, so thank you. This is our presentation. We'll give you a bit of context. We will not read everything that is on screen, but we would like to note that there's a perception of migration in Chile that has moved. Is the perspective from migration has been different. The, the perspective we've had up to now, we're currently going through a media that's... Uh, framework that's criminalizing migration and that's here we we see the CADEM survey data uh, on the negative perceptions that national citizens have about migrants immigrants now here you can see data with more detail the national migration survey states that at least 30 percent of migrants have uh, point out that they've suffered discrimination given their nationality which leads us to work on hate speech and racism in Chile and focus on the second line, which has to do with digital platforms, where we see that these hate speeches are quite disseminated because there's no moderation. And due to anonymity, there's space for hate speech, abundant quantity of them that generates discrimination and violence. With our colleagues, Sivrian and Rios, we worked on the question, how is this exposure to hate speeches on migrant communities in the, Chile, in the Chilean media ecosystem? What is it like? And we will present the outcomes today. The survey has five dimensions, quantitative dimensions, and we won't go into detail, but we have an N of 1,020 people that were surveyed they're almost divided in half in male and female participants. We have macrozoles, the regional level, how, how long they've lived in Chile, and here we have the age range. Of course, migration in Chile comes, the migrants come from different parts, right? 
for us, it was important to reach the current migration we have in Chile, the numbers that are close to that. So here we see the total migrants from different countries, the different uh, respondents we surveyed and the countries they're from. We tried to have representativity, but that is a bit, th this is the greatest number that we could achieve. I'd like to leave you with my colleague naively so we can look at the outcomes. I'd like to highlight that this is a project which is hosted within the internal research contest of Universidad del Rosario Royo is a project that was awarded to us. And we conducted it last year on field work, the, the entire year in field work. I'd like to highlight that different social organizations collaborated, inclu including the Catholic Institute of Migration, INCAMI, which supported us. And it allowed us to do our field work. I'd also like to stress that in the field work, we've had participation of students from Universidad del Desarrollo, also from Universidad Alberto Hurtado, and without them, without, without all their contribution and the awarded fund from Universidad del Desarrollo, without the support contributions of INCAMI and the students, we would not have 1,020 respondents which is an N or a number that is quite high compared with other Ns of other migrant surveys for a team that is so small and for such limited resources. Having said this, we obtained quite interesting results like the ones uh, we presented here. For example, migrant women use TV and Instagram a bit more while men use more YouTube and WhatsApp to get informed, quite coherent with what Professor Valenzuela showed us today, that, that the trend of publics to current, our current audiences is to be informed through social media. But in migrants, there's differences in how they get informed. They obtain information regarding there's differences in their gender and even in terms of nationality. And we'll see this later on now. Motivation and information consumption by gender is also quite important to, to see what is most interesting is changes in migration policy. What the most interesting to them, which is to them, immigrants, they do need to get informed. Why? Basically, they because they need data on changes on migration policies. What's the, how is this managed? It's quite interesting here that the greater interest for women was 63%. The topic of greatest interest is the migration policy for women, while the informative consumption motivation, the greatest one, and this is to help others or other migrants. That is to say that one of the main motivations why women obtain information on migration policy is to help other migrants. Quite interesting. Now, the exposure in terms of hate speech, exposure to hate speech, it's worth noting that more than half of our respondents, that is to say 61% of the 1,020 respondents, have received hate speeches. That is a number which is quite important for us because it means that most migrants receive, constantly receive hate speeches. Another thing that's caught our attention in terms of results is that the main hate speech exists in Instagram, which is one of the most used platforms, followed by Facebook, which is another one of the greatest used platforms here, then followed by television. Therefore, violence towards migrants is mostly on Instagram, Facebook, and on television. Here we have the results by nationality, which do not surprise us, right? I'm almost closing, but here you can see that those that receive the greatest hate speech speeches due to their nationalities are nationalities from Colombia, Venezuela, and Haiti. But here we need to make a caveat that uh, or an exception that in the case of Haiti, most of the violence is on Facebook. In the case of Venezuela, we can find most of the violence in, in the greatest quantity of violence in Instagram. And in the case of Colombia, most of the violence is located in on TV and on Instagram too. 
importante es revisar el cruce de nacionalidades. We can see the interesting uh, cross here, uh, crossing of nationalities and platforms. It's worth analyzing. And uh, another outcome that comes to our attention is that the most recurrent type of uh, hate speech that we have, hate speech is has to do with physical traits, right? And it affects mostly people from Peru and Haiti. And uh, the one... The, and security and safety is the other theme that's more present in hate speeches. This is more happens more often and frequent in people from Venezuela and Colombia. This is data that did not surprise us, but it's worth backing it up and supporting it. And we're doing this with this ratio, which is uh, it's gigantic, it's enormous. We did not expect to such extent, then we realize that migrants, as a consequence of this, uh, the, the fact that they constantly receive hate speech, want what they, uh, one of the strategies they use is news avoidance, which Professor Venezuela also mentioned. And this news avoidance is due to hostility is most ex mostly exerted by women women from colombia and venezuela and i'm included within within those women the people uh, i do avoid news yes news avoidance due to this it's quite concerning yes it's concerning and i myself have to have a self-reflexive or critical position with myself to be able to face the type of information and the type of frame that's always present in news on media social media and the hate speeches speeches that we're currently faced with migrants so it's quite concerning that more than 61 percent more than half of the survey of the respondents consultants have received hate speeches right 1020 people most of these messages have as a theme insecurity when we talk about insecurity they focus on skin color and or nationality just to say that it's not only insecurity for foreigners but insecurity of foreigners caused by uh, the Venezuelan uh, African uh, Americans or, uh, and uh, Afro descendants, right? And this is through Instagram, TV, Facebook. And the news avoidance is presented as a possible, a mainly uh, a struggle strategy or facing strategy from women in Colombia and Venezuela, which could lead them to be disinformed with the news avoidance. These results see the need of promoting integration between migrant communities at all levels, including in terms of the media, of the media speech, which is not that addressed in coexistence and regulation policies. This must foster interculturality and combat discrimination, segregation, and informative inequality. Generating conditions for coexistence and living is also a challenge for freedom of press. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, to Amarita Alfaro and Ms. Vian for that presentation. Thank you very much for this effort working working between different uh, universities. Now we will talk about intercultural noise in the representation of uh, Latin American migrants and First Nations in uh, Chilean digital journals. Dario Brown Sartori, professor, head professor of uh, the Institute of Social Communication of Universidad Austral de Chile, will give a lecture. He's also a director of PhD in Communication of Universidad Austral de Chile and Universidad de la Frontera. Please, sir, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Good morning. We are part of a team. I am one in the staff. And I want to first say that because of time constraints, I'm going to try to focus on what we are going to present in the conclusions of a project and the project itself. So very quickly, we're going to divide this presentation on three stages. First, the formulation of the project, the first thing I'm going to present, then some very general results as examples mainly, and third, the conclusions which I think are the most important part. It's necessary to say that this is a project that was financed by the Anid informative pluralism that helped us carrying this out 
done within the Universidad Austral de Chile and Universidad de Playa Ancha. And I have to say this and I want to highlight this. This is because of the team and I want to provide the names, Alex Insunza, Pamela Romero from Playa Ancha and from Universidad Austral, methodological advisor from neither of the universities, Luis Bertoglia and two thesis writers. One got her degree as a master's, master's degree last week and the other student got her journalism degree last week as well. This is the item that financed us under the PLU logic. Those who work in the media know it very well. It usually helps us finance projects. This is the title. Claudia shared this with you, intercultural noises in immigrant and Latin American representation also of or indigenous peoples in digital Chilean newspapers. This is a very general proposal, and I would even say basic, because we wanted to get quick results because this is one year project. And the objective is to reflect around the treatment that digital media provide Latin American and origin indigenous, indigenous peoples and in, in Latin American immigrants in their speeches with the objective of proving the pluralism that is present on the current system. The general objective, as I said, this is point number one of the presentation, where we try to outline the formulation of the project. On the obje general objective is to analyze the presence of intercultural noises in the representation of Latin American immigrants and indigenous peoples in digital Chilean newspapers since June 2021 20, to 2022 June. This is just for one year. The specific objectives, is, these are broader. The one is to distinguish the presence of intercultural noise in the two issues that we're dealing in digital media. We're going to see who they are. The second is to the, is the strategic methodology that I'm going to present very briefly. And then, which was objective number three, which was the most difficult one, is to see what are the routines and procedures through which journalisms, journalists, journalists reach to get to the kinds of noises in the context that we had for ourselves. What is the methodology? What I was saying before, also, it responds to a methodological system that is quite flexible, it's quick, that can provide immediate results, and that's what we got. In fact, in Incom and the Congress of Semiotics, which was in here as well, we presented part of the initial results of this project. Now this project is finished. We can present it in more concretely in more definite terms. The methodology was divided in two stages. The first, critical analysis of the speech. We applied a matrix to study text and their images. This is the published piece of news that correspond to objective number one and two of this first methodological stage. And a second methodological stage, which was structure, semi-structures, interviews to analyze the protocols of these six medias. These objectives on this methodological part was a bit more problematic because it was very difficult for journalists to speak about how they report and how they write. And we tried to find a solution throughout the project. The work team in, in this year that we had for our work, 2021 and 2022, we tried to find some landmarks that we thought were interesting to have underanalyzed. First, the National Indigenous Peoples Days, how it was covered in the media, that important landmark. Number two, the constitutional exceptional state in the provinces of Arauco, Bio Bio, and Araucanía. This is a very familiar issue for us. Three, the passing of the truck driver, Byron Castillo in Antofagasta. And number four, anti-immigrant manifestations in Iquique. 
What are the media? We divided the media under these labels, independent digital media, el mostrador en el desconcierto, traditional digital media, la tercera en EMOL, en alternative digital media, la voz de los que sobra en interferencia. So, therefore, we applied everything that we reviewed on the first part to this, to this six platforms and what they showed that year in platform. We analyzed 286 news coverages in different ways in the media in the media that we indicated before you can see this information is available you can request it you can request it to us but we can quickly see what are the key words that were revealed in some of the media more remarkably according to the ideological view of each media. Migration crisis, more than celebrating these days, for example, also Venezuelan citizens, incendiary attack in Emol, migration crisis in El Mostrador. These are general concepts that on October the 12th, crime, violence. But now I'm going to get to the conclusions, which is the last part and the most important part, and I'll, it'll take me two minutes. Conclusions for indigenous peoples. Traditional digital media, independent and alternative, represent indigenous peoples as rich peoples on cultural diversity. Fine. Two, traditional and independent media represent the region of Araucanía and part of the Bio Bio regions, particularly the Mapuche people as terrorist armed groups and violent. Three, on the National Day for Indigenous People, we observed that most of the published news on six media do not respond to informative pluralism, which is the axis of this, the contest that helped us find, uh, finance this project. And last, on the landmark exceptional state, the traditional independent media focused their news on the incendiary attacks and the constitutional measures. Conclusions in immigrants. Latin American immigrants represented like criminals and responsible for crime and insecurity and unsafety. Also, they were treated as victims of xenophobia and as a burden for the country. Three, on the landmark of the passing of Iron Castillo, the traditional and independent media communicated a criminal image while the alternative media did a social criticism to the mobilization of truck drivers and represented as anti-immigrants. On the landmark march against the immigrants, the traditional media related their news to homicides, drug trafficking, and thievery. And the independent and alternative means directed their news into rejecting xenophobia of regular social media. Next to last slide. Very briefly, please. General conclusions. There is intercultural noise in the news that we analyzed in general. And we differentiate between ethnicity and it's in, on the body of the news, therefore rarely on the headline. So in this way, both figures that were studied, indigenous and immigrant are presented as a dual form. The first, uh, they contribute to the culture of their country, but at the same time armed against the state. These are two dual approaches. Now the migrant is represented as a person that is a victim of xenophobia in a precarious situation, but also in parallel as a problem and an administrative burden for the country and as people that bring a culture of crime and their presence means a risk for Chileans. And finally, challenges for an intercultural press, part of the main results of the thesis that were defended lately. There is hardly any training in cultural diversity. Many are just on paper, the, the lack of importance of interculturality in periodism programs, journalist programs. There's no such a thing as intercultural journalism or something like that on the university programs. For a, for a good result, we need to have more sources. That was very quick. Thank you so much.
Again, we want to thank Professor Rodrigo Brown Santori, and we keep working with the presentation, A Crisis in the Agenda, Representations and Media Attributes of Migration in Emol and Radio Bio Bio. Presenting Jose Ernesto González Mosquera, journalist and studying the PhD from this university. Thank you. Thank you, Claudia. And of course, thank you to the great investigators that have asked me to be a part of this panel. As a migrant, and they've been in this country for a few months, it was very interesting for me to see the news at home, and I realized how many news of regarding immigration that we watch and the lack of representation of migrant journalists because I started seeing migration and the study of media representation of migration is not something new and as we say in my country we're not going to rediscover cold water but it was very interesting for me to have this issue on how the press represents migrants and how they build the news from news genres and from which perspective they were telling the stories of migrants in Chile. The arrival of migrants, according to the CADEM survey, most people perceived it as bad. And I want to see I want to see how much the representation of the media might be influencing this. And that's what we were talking about. I was interested in seeing how these attributes that are represented in the agenda of the media and how their specific use of certain genres or certain journalist sources might potentiate what was being represented. Our main hypothesis were, was that the media used mostly official media regarding migration with an approach of crime, safety, and policies in detriment of using testimonies to know what is going on with migrants on their own voices, even those who are experts. The official sources reinforce and safety and security. So we usually legitimize the official sources so we think that the, what they say is real. The representation of migration as a crisis, what, as we saw in the first presentation, it is conditioned by the use of official sources and the use of the genre news rather than a more explicative or something that can be clear can condition these representations about migration. So in this way, and of course, this is a quantitative study, this is just exploratory, we analyzed 145 pieces of news from EMOL and BioBio Bio based on digital news from Oxford under the assumption that they are a highly reliable, they are highly reliable in Chile and we used a couple of months of 2022 and the same months in 2023, 2022, because the new migration law was started to be implemented in 2023. The, well, the other way around. First, the change of precedent and then the new bill of law for migrants. So any piece of news that had these kinds of words were under scrutiny. First, we wanted to say what were the genres, what sources they were using, the, the approaches and the representations of migration. This, of course, based on the existing literature as representations are attributed to media. So the main findings in these two periods, Emol published 153 and BioBio 273. The most used genre was, of course, the news. And we see the detriment of other genres that might be clear and could provide more background regarding these issues. The main approach was violence, security, then state policies, economics, and others, as we said before the most used sources was the official source, but by many, we see out of 349 pieces of news, at least testimonies were only used on 34. And the representations on migration that were most used was crime and safety and security, amount of migrants, and 
the use of the presentations as a crisis was under 45 pieces of news. This has a perfect dialogue with the previous presentation. Now, regarding the hypothesis, if the means use official sources in their news regarding migration as a focus for crime and insecurity in other countries, so there was a correlation that was meaningful for them. And in this way, it's interesting to see that we do not use any testimonial sources. The official sources are the ones that are dictating what can be published or what can be represented on the media by media. So we need more plurality in the use of the media. Now, there were no meaningful pieces of information in the first one. It was interesting that the use of official sources where we used it the most are in those news that migrants are represented around crime. So there are many pieces of news that are the same official news, the ones that are associated to this representation. This is something that we should take into account. In the, present, in the representation of migration as a crisis, out of the total of news, it was not statistically meaningful. Where we did see it are in those where the media use official sources. So it's the official sources that represent migration or they label it as a crisis. It's not other kinds of sources. It, it wasn't an expert. It wasn't a testimony. These were the official sources that have used this category to refer to to the phenomena. And in the last, the, the use of the news genre and detriment of other genres, we have some in, meaningful information about this. This means the use of news only that does not use other genres that might provide more background or can pro problematize or analyze this issue deeper, conditions how this issue is being represented, at least on these kinds of media. General discussions, so this means biases about migrants without any achievements or any contributions or any welcome to the audience and the lack of context and or alternative perspectives or multiplicity of voices or investigative research and journalism or experts that might maybe provide another perspective and a potential stigmatization of migrant populations that is built under the media agenda. Some limitations, this of course, this is an exploratory investigation that once the time frame from May, it, finishes we're going to keep working on this but certainly this analysis might be complemented by opening the universe of the sample this means to other other voices and it might influence the amount of news because the time frame that we chose was very fruitful for for these issues particularly thank you Thank you so much. Thank you, Jose Ernesto González Mosquera. And I want to comment that this broadcast is being done in English, but we will upload it in Spanish. Now we're going to carry on with the presentation, Cities and Intercultural Media, Empowering of Migrant Communities from Communication. Presenting Jimena Pofiroa, Director, Doctor, the PhD on Latin American Studies, academic director of the Communication and Image School, and academic coordinator on, of the Racism and Contemporary Migration Lecture of Universidad de Chile, please. Thank you so much. Thank you to my students for cheering on. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you for being present in this academic conference that we've organized with a lot of effort and with a lot of commitment as well with all our academic communities from Chile, from abroad, and especially with our students. Mainly, I'm going to address this issue with, and I want to thank my team because from INCOM that we put together this panel 
that always calls us to keep working. You know that this is the organization of image and communications and that we've been working on for a long time. I see a lot of familiar faces. Thank you so much. This issue, I've been working with it, especially when I started working on the construction of the mig migrational political subject. And what also summons us in this conference and that has to do with security, well, security has to do with maintaining democracy, with deepen our democracy and make it more dense. And we cannot make it more dense without those voices that should be there. And the voices that should be there, at least in the case that we see here, are those voices, are the voices of those who migrate to different countries. Human mobility, we have migrations, we have human displacements. And from the perspective that I work is the perspective of the right to migrate. There's also a political and epistemic contradiction in the defense of the right to migrate in where we need to say in the context of Chile, Chile is one of the few countries around the world that has not signed the World Pact for safe, orderly and regular migration. And in this way, there is no protection. There's no protection policy, and it's also not focused on promoting speeches. Even the, we have in the policy and in the law, there's no diverse speeches. Therefore, democracy is weakened. In this way, I've been working especially with organizations, but I've also and especially with issues of city and the construction of different cities, because this has a correlation with the daily life in the construction of subjectivities. And I've also worked with the construction of city, with the political subject in organizations, where is their narrative, what is their level of incidence, and how they re relate to global cities, where Chile is in between. It's a middle city. There are other smaller cities in the case of Chile, but capitals of Latin America are now becoming more global cities because of migration, especially intra-regional migration. And I've studied this in the same investigation. This is just approximations. But for example, the same thing in Spain, where we see many organizations that have been active for a long time and they've had fluctuations in their becoming, like in the case of Chile. In Chile, we have the network of migrant journalists and we have the network of organiza organizations for migrants and pro-migrants. Maybe you haven't heard of this, but in at, right now, people from the network are presenting at the GAM. I would have liked to hear their presentations, of course. So what we do is that we decode and we work with the different narratives presented on their editorial lines because each organization has transformed as well their own narrative narratives and their own set of ideas in a communication means. Collectives, and we saw this in Spain 20 years ago, we still see it, of course, where collectives create their own media, but then journalists create their own media. In Spain, we've detected 100 media, that then this number fluctuates constantly. And I've had the chance of interviewing a lot of people there, people that direct this media where I can mention just a few, Canal Latino TV, Radio Gladys, that has a national scope and with a lot of outreach of a lot of media, for example, Latino, where we are talking about an important outreach according to the diffusion, how widespread this media is. In Tuami, which is another media in Spain, went from 20,000 copies to 31,000. I'm not going to read the presentation here. You can read migrations are cyclic, they go in spiral. We have what it means to communicate, to bring to life what cannot be lived in the cities. And we have the case of Chile. I have a phrase of Judith Butler, Butler because there are investigations that also should have an intersectorial approach and also from the investigation action approach. And I want to present this, the, the methodology of what I'm working on. And I want to appreciate 
Vanessa that helps me help me get put together this presentation. We have the quantitative analysis on the first stage with some thesis with interviews in Spain. We are doing the analysis of declarations, statements in Chile, but also the migrant means in Chile. What we found the most, more than media, we have social media of organizations of different collectives or whatever that pop up in these networks and collectives, Emigranta, Movimiento Acción Migrante, and others that have an important scope in, in young people, for example, the Voz Haitiana, among others. In the second phase, the second stage, we do the qualitative and compared analysis with Spain and Latin America, Colombia, Peru, and Argentina, and some of or Uruguay. That's where we see a work group of cities and violence with those that we are working on. And I'm showing this because with ACNUD, we, we, and with many other journalists, we had this non-label journalists for all Latin America. And this course, we did a previous one during the pandemic, and the second one also offers the tools of narratives. And we offer new narratives tools with journalists and communicators that are migrants without academic extractivism that also presents issues for us. Now, the editorial lines, we've reviewed them especially in Spain, and some of it in Peru as well. What are their struggles? What are their local traditional press? What are the hostile situations that they go through? Covering news in Chile, not just regarding migration, but also regarding the city and the day-to-day -day tasks in in the city for migrant communicators and journalists is even more difficult because it, it can be very hostile and sometimes it has fatal consequences. And the important thing is constructing new narratives. And in these approximations, we also see, well, in, in narratives and construction of subjectivities, we also have a very specific case, which is the Fundación Por Causa. They work a lot and they work very well in advising the media from Spain and from migrants in order to offer narratives that allow to work on a level of political incidents locally and nationally, the, 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 for example, the, the pact that this needs to be signed. And in the case of Chile, for example, migrant journalists have worked a lot on what it means biometric issues. There was a failure on the government because it, it had a place in securitization. Somehow, what we see here is to find new narratives to fight criminalization and victimization, and also placing the person in, in human mobility in conditions of dignity. This is just from the High Commissioner's Office for Human Rights, because this is something that inspires us. These are approximations that I, I offer you so that we can see how to create networks to keep working and how to keep aiming at this goal. And, I'm, and I share my colleagues, this is a, a brochure that you can find on their website and on their social media so that you can follow them. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Professor. Thank you to all her students accompanying us today. So we will start with the, the media. We'll talk about the migration frameworks during migration during the discussion of law 21,325 between 2018 and 21, presented by its author, Vanessa Zuniga Rodrigo. She's a, she's a teacher, a professor from Universidad Andres Bello. Thank you. Thank you. I'll start with a metaphor, and I'd like to say that life is a trip, a journey. Journeys for people are account for determination, the human capacity of adapting and evolving, even more when these trips evolve, involve crossing borders, overcoming cultural barriers, and uh, the legal difficulties. 
overcoming them. Also, with the challenges associated in the last five decades, more than 180 million people, i.e. 3.6% of the global population, has had to migrate to other countries. And Chile has become the second preferred destination by Latin American immigrants, according to Global to World Bank in 2023. This has led to political and social challenges. The surveys of Cadem 2022 show that immigration generates a negative perception toward migrants, towards migrants associated to concerns on uh, the social dynamics and citizen security, safety. The way in which the media informs on migration has a significant impact on the impacts and public policies towards these communities. Therefore, studying the message that uh, media build on immigration it has an important value. In the last 30 years, Chilean science literature on immigration has, pro has provided theoretical information that is robust to understand the effects of press in the construction of the migration reality of the country. It's just in 2010 where we observe an expansion in empirical information on the media resources of immigration and the coverage. I hope I'm not mistaken here. And this research, which I'm showing today, was part of my PhD thesis. We have questions on migration and media for the Chilean case. As we know, during these years, we discussed and approved in Chilean Congress a new migration law, turning it into one of the most significant public policies throughout the years. Debate, which was a result of generalized agreement that showed that between 1975 and 4 million during dictatorship, it was insufficient to regulate the characteristics and com complexities of contemporary immigration. This study uses the classical model of the five generic frames, so Michael Valtke, 2000, which have been used in more than 3,000 research pieces, which uh, covers migration and media pluralism. This work is covered from a mixed approach divided into phases. In the first phase, we have a quantitative analysis with uh, a model proposed by Symmetico and Balkenberg. It's 20 questions to establish five generic frameworks that could exist in media news. Nevertheless, there are objectives on the models proposed by the German authors, which state that these frameworks do not talk about the local frameworks where it seeks to be framed. Now, to overcome this difficulty in a second phase, we used a qualitative strategy proposed by professors Bruno Yepina Purat 2020, and uh, we analyze implicit and explicit content to the news pieces or texts. The sample was made up of 12 Chilean media printed and web portals. Its aim was to have different uh, journalistic approaches, editorial guidance, um, and the end, the piece of new was uh, 912 pieces of new on parliamentarian matters and on migrants. The outcomes confirm the media frames and uh, immigration matters, where there's a prevalence of conflict and attribution and responsibility frame versus the migration, the growth of migration, and the growth of migration. It's worth noting how the journalistic papers in Chile how this is all covered from national, the national security approach. The analysis also showed that information media framed the migration phenomenon based on an uh, migratory control and its regulations. And it does not go deep into the solutions of the problem, but into the disagreement of political groups regarding the legislative uh, approach of migration that is control and migration irregularity. This frame was evidenced in the political media frame, like the Clinic Operativa Bio Bio and Mercurio Tercera and Mo. Now, regarding the responsibility attribution frame, it focused on irregularity as one of the most relevant topics of migration policy, mainly media such as El Mostrador, La Cuarta, La Segunda, Las Últimas Noticias. 
in this in the same frame, we noted the responsibility of the executive branch and the Congress members regarding the migration issue, of migration, the problem of migration. This media perspective promoted the idea that the government should have a guarantor, role as a guarantor in administrative policies, focused on ordering the foreign flow that entered Chile through a non to roads that are not enabled. Now, results showed that within the frameworks of conflict and the attribution of responsibilities, we there's a new framework that exists to frame the migration, which is called normative or regulatory frame. Media in Chile have guided the discussion of migration towards a normative uh, frame, promoting an idea of how migrants should behave and highlighting the importance of complying with different social by, by the government. We have printed media and also web portals, which drive a standard that is pursuant to legal regulations. This perspective framed in conflict presents immigration as a social problem, which is perceived as a threat to internal order reflected in the meta the recurring metaphor of ordering the household, which has to do with maintaining a cultural identity based on order. In this regard, the discussion on immigration and its debate in Congress was focused from on from an antagonistic point of view. The vision of the government as an author of, of a migration reform based on regulation, control, and uh, the opposition which intercedes through a policy towards a human right approach. I'll, I'll go into conclusions now. And the factorial analysis of the first conclusion, we've got uh, conflict and attribution of responsibility, those two frames, which reflect how we've understood the migration phenomena. During this discussion of the reform by press, this is not minor considering that the perception, the precision that individuals have on, on uh, political matters, they depend on the focus on each uh, uh, from the media. I'm going to quote Sadid, which says that frame is critical in democracies because it's the political elites, the ones that control the perspectives of uh, problems and they uh, shape the public. And it's a political struggle between groups and institutions as a frame. During the four years where we d debated the law, both the government of Sebastián Piñera and other political stakeholders implemented a series of discursive actions in order to install a dominant frame, the perspective that the media adopted resulted, uh, highlighted the disagreement of the different stakeholders, which could impact a polarized and conflicted public perception in the face of migration. The analysis, the discussion on the migration of Chile, and this analysis is focused on this uh, generic conflict attribution of responsibility, all these frames, and the less economic consequence of morality and human interest, these frames were excluded. This study found a media framework, which is called normative, which establishes social order based which is differentiated among those that comply the, the laws of a country and those that do not or violate them. We also, in third place, we said that the frames did not have a different diversity of journalistic sources and media promoted the vision of the government focus on a speech on who should order and administer migration, which proves that there, there were different contents. It was the, quite homogeneous when showing that the, the migration debate, both in the due to the frames used and the institutional matters that was Ernesto mentioned, especially in written press. I'd like to conclude by with a final reflection, pointing out that migration is therefore, according to the study, and the information that I could gather is that it turns into a power topic in Chile where the different political ideologies compete to impact and influence on the laws that will determine the future of immigrants. This eclipse, this policy eclipses the reality of those that migrate and those that receive this. 
leaving it in a second uh, backdrop, the backdrop, right? And media with their medial logics just talked about a political power and security. They just made everything fall into that category. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Vanessa Suñiga Rodriguez. Thank you to all the speakers who have stayed within your time limits. We have five minutes, despite the fact. We have five minutes for questions. I know that we're going to have a Q&A session now, okay? Two questions. Questions more than comments, please. If anyone has any questions. Magdalena, there's a question here from the audience. Please raise your hands if you have questions. If not, thank you for the opportunity. I had a question. How, as a journal, as journalists, as new generations, how can we insert in this new agenda this change? Yes, plurality of the critical thinking. I'm sorry. What they're showing is that it's not uh, in proportion. Okay, thank you for your question. To all the lecturers and speakers, who, who wants to respond to this? I think that I'll talk about investigation. I think it's quite complex to address pluralism, the logics that we're currently doing journalism, right? Because just like our peer mentioned before, who just left, right? Jose Ernesto, he's in another lecture now. Official sources are important when reporting. And they're the ones that will impose this frame. So ideally, or the framing, it'd be, it'd be great to consider migrants, organizations, different sources, right? Even more in periods that I analyzed, right? During the discussion of the law, what did they think about this? What was, what did they think about this law? What was their position? And the research that professors, or the investigations they made here, they don't know about what the law says, what was the lit law aiming for? Because what I'm rescuing here in research is that the discussion is about human rights or regulation, but do we know what it's really about? What do articles really say? I skipped many things, but they also spoke about migration tourism. So certain phrases are used to sell the press, but not to inform. So I think that it, in order for there to be more pluralism, we should hear from all the sources, and we cannot hear that all the sources, only the institutional sources, which not only happens in migration, it happens in many other topics too. And there's much literature here of white journalism in Chile. Why do we normally hear the official sources a bit more? There's an interest, not because of the phenomenon or understanding the social facts, but there's an interest for commercializing, mercantilizing this, right, in instrumentalizing it according to different interests that exist, which should transform it into journalistic routines. What Professor Brown showed shows that the journalism routine limits the possibility of establishing into control dialogue and being able to generate pluralism because the journalistic routine is under some time logics and which are specific and hierarchies that are specific which will eclipse the diversity that's behind the phenomena so we would have to start by thinking if that logic from the journalistic routine is a logic that could contribute to intercultural and global cities. And if not, we need to rethink about journalism. Thank you, we have one last question. One last question before the panel. 
is over. We've got two minutes. Last question, please. During the day and during this morning, we've heard much about this. Journalism and communications is by no means by them comes to mind, right? Uh, journalism and communicators. There's a critical view regarding the routines, the practices, and the what they established in traditional media select or elect, right? But and who knows the framing that those other media are creating because they're, they could be as vicious as the ones that we're criticizing in the traditional media. Who's going to know that? Professor Kimena Po will uh, answer this. When we talk about communicators in a precarious uh, migration context, not everyone is journalism, a journalist, right? Uh, there are different lawyers and uh, architects, right? Which also, which could be quite far away, like me. But they have to work in communication. Because of Chile, they've had to have work in organizations, organizations to communicate with the other media are not communicating. Not even the alternative or independent media are possibly communicating this. And this has been analyzed in other media. When we talk about other media and concerts, Chile doesn't have that many much media, right? We are still owing the program grill and or agenda in the world, right? Place number 53 is a very bad place. It's terrible. We're in the, uh, in, in terms of uh, freedom of press, it's terrible. It's not, we, it's not a joy, really. Nothing to be happy about. In that sense, all the media, due to the precariousness, routines, we've had to work with El Mostrador, El Desconcierto, El Ciudadano, having to look. The press analysis is quite. Uh, old right and uh it's ancient so they go into the same they fall into the same act right they are not going to the sources of course they go into sources of organizations etc but there's many issues in relevant precise data and evidence and data check or checking so that is disinformation so it's critical in the case of chile and it happens in latin america in general Francisca Sandoval was not uh, did not get her degree as a journalist in May first, uh, 2022. She she was a communicator. She did not have her degree, but she was already working there. That's why we make that distinction because the UNESCO makes that distinction too for the security safety of communicators and journalists in this area. That's why they do right when there are many people that are covering and journalists and. And Palestine do not have their degree, but they're covering, right? And uh, those are the images that we get. So, of course, journalists have a greater possibility. We have an even greater possibility because we've been trained to hierarchy, to have a hierarchy of information, to be able to work for, for the sources, not only to be the, the official sources, but our students, uh, they interview organizations, Different and different careers, different universities start uh, interviewing because, so that when they're working on media, they can have a booklet of what it was before, right? Uh, to be able to later draft and say, okay, it's not, we can't just have one source, we have to have many more. And uh, I don't know if I mentioned this correctly. Okay, we do not have more time. I'm sorry, we do have to conclude this panel. We'd like to thank all the panel members and everyone that's accompanied us today in person, also online. Please review the program, the conference's agenda, because we have many interesting panels up next. Thank you very much.